Peace to the gods and earth. This is the God Born Bill Universal, transmitter supreme science on Earth and the Universe. And this is I God TV, live from planet Earth, family. I want to say welcome back to everybody, all my subscribers. Make sure you're sharing, liking, and subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet. You know what I mean? We got way more impactful interviews and videos coming soon for everybody. You know what I mean? We're going to be tapping into a lot. You know what I mean? So make sure you subscribe so that way you can get that alert to know when we're putting something down. You know what I mean? I want to say shout out to my homie Dom up at New World One. You know what I mean? Make sure y'all get up with New World One clothing on Instagram. You know what I mean? Fire clothes. You already know how that go. Get up with my guy Dom. You know what I mean? Shout out to Red Phoenix Agency. Shout out to my man Stu over there. Get up with them, man. Get your credit together. You know what I mean? Get your finances. Get everything straightened out, man. Here, make it all happen for you, man. Get up with my guy Stu. You know what I mean? And I told y'all it was coming, family. All right? Y'all saw the pre-show with me and the Augie. How we was getting down and going back and forth, you know, putting the ideas out there. Well, you already know when I come in on the lecture side, it's strictly evidence only. You know what I mean? I'm coming with the strict evidence, simple and plain for us all to see and understand. You know what I mean? So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to give you the pyramid theory, the lecture. All right. And we coming, like I said, we coming with the evidence. We coming with the truth of the people of the planet. You know what I mean? To regain our power so that we can give it to our children, man, to pass on, man, so they don't have to live under these restraints that we've been held up, up, up under for hundreds and hundreds of years. You know what I mean? So that's what it's about. You know what I mean? So when we're talking about the pyramids, you know, we said a little about, bit about this the other night, but, you know, there's a lot of theories and a lot of stories, you know what I mean, whether they just be fantasy or some of them are actually religious even. You know, people actually live by some of these stories even. You know what I mean? That have to do with the pyramids, you know, and it's kind of like every story told by something ancient or someone ancient. It's like it has to have the pyramids or something involved in it to have that stamp. You know what I mean? Like for it to for someone to feel like you were in the ancient times or this is ancient text or this was something that existed in the ancient world. You know what I mean? It had it always had to have some ties in, you know, with the pyramids. You know what I mean? And we're going to show you today that. This is a human experience. This is a human phenomena, okay? And we've always had the knowledge and the wisdom and understanding to do these things since the beginning of time, you know? And the technology isn't actually technology. It's things that they found that the human was already doing and passed down through time, you know? A lot of people wanted to take credibility, but we know that all that has to do with power, you know what I mean? And the struggle that we up under today, you know? But we about to take the blankets off, you know what I mean? And reveal what's up under the sheets, you know what I mean? And show them where everything really came from, who really put all this together, you know, and how it all went down. You know what I mean? So once again, I want to thank everybody for tapping in. Make sure you're sharing and subscribing, you know what I mean? And this is just the beginning, baby. We're going we gonna to keep going. We're going to keep pushing. We're going to keep getting deeper and deeper into the history of the human being, you know what I mean? For real. So without further ado, let's get to this, family. All right. I told y'all it was coming. Let's get to it. All right. Let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. All right. Now, first of all, <coughs> the only way anybody in any type of architecture or construction uh, tell you that you're not going to build anything or construct anything without knowing the math first, okay? You have to know the math first, all right? The language of construction and building is mathematics, all right? You use math to create. You know what I mean? All this we got out here and everything that we see that's out here created is from mathematical language, you know, and math is a language, you know what I mean? We used to listen to that back in the day when we was in school. We ain't want to hear none of that, you know what I mean? But I'm telling you right here tonight, math is a language, all right? You know what I mean? And it put all this out here, everything that we see. You feel me? So the teacher was right. She was right the whole time. You know what I mean? So without math, you can't build anything, all right? So we showing you right here, family, what you're looking at is ancient mathematics and numerology to show you that the ancient ones were the, were the masters of mathematics, 
were the originators of mathematics, okay? And there were no bounds to their mathematics, okay? Because even if they do give the credit, a lot of times they want to try to say, well, they only took it so far. You know what I mean? Well, we're showing you here tonight in these pictures that it could go as far as they wanted it to go, okay? We see over in the left, we see your boy Einstein, E equals MC squared. But if we watch the, if we watch the uh, Let There Be Light podcast, if you haven't seen that, go back in the Live from Planet Earth season one, and you can see the Let There Be Light. And we showed you where the unk comes from the human body, which they realized, which they realized was an electrical conductor, okay? And used that to, to create wireless electricity, okay? Using these same principles you see right here that Einstein came in later and said that he, <laughs> that he figured out, you know, when actually this was the time that they was doing all this rambling in these ancient texts, okay? See, one thing we don't think about is we think of Einstein, Newton, and all these dudes, these scientists that they tell us about. What they don't tell us is these dudes only got so smart once they went down and started digging the tombs up and started bringing all these books and scrolls and documents from inside the earth from the ancient people and putting them in the museums and the stuff they wanted to carry on and study as a career, they kept out the museums, man. You know, the secrets is the shit is the stuff that dudes just kept with them and studied it themselves and then became these great scholars, Plato and all these dudes that they come out with and these names that they talk about are just understudies, man. You know, they didn't invent Tesla. They didn't invent, create anything, man. They've taken knowledge and wisdom that's been passed down from the human family since the beginning of time. You know what I mean? And once we realize that, then we realize there is no ownership. It's for all of us to be able to provide with and to take to our, for our advantage. Get what I'm saying? So, yeah, you can't build anything without mathematics. You know what I mean? So you got to have the math right, and you have to know the math, you know what I mean, to even do this type of structures, to build anything, period. Okay? Let's just say that. All right? Let's continue on. What's the second thing you're going to need? Well, the pyramids, the great pyramids is built up under the stars, okay? Well, you would have to have the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding of the universe and the stars to know how to build under a star, to even know those stars even exist because they're so far away, okay? And we're not even going to get into how they could see these, see these planets and stars, you know, without the modern telescope. You know what I mean? But anybody know anything about crystals and things like that, you know exactly how they used to be able to see these things. You know what I mean? But anyway, the second thing you're going to need, you're going to have to know that you have to have your astronomy and your astrology together. All right? Okay? And we see right here in these four pictures that the ancient Kemite knew the universe well. Okay? He had everything cataloged. He had everything marked. And he had everything accounted for. You know what I mean? So along with the mathematics and the astrology, you know what I mean? Together is the only way you're going to have the ability to build a structure like these. OK, and we know that they thousands and thousands of years old. Most of these buildings and structures that we build now only have like maybe 100 years worth of life to them before you had to rebuild them, do some thing to them, you know, had to do some type of reconstruction to them or some type of maintenance to them to keep them going. These are things that have been through floods, storms, anything, sandstorms, anything you can think of still here on the planet to this day, all right? Now, if we look down here on the bottom two pictures, family, I want y'all to check out these bottom two. We see what we would call Orion, but we know it would actually symbolize Osiris and Kemet, okay? Now, we see the posture of Orion, all right? Well, they call it the hunter, but on this one, they kind of got the diagram a little different with the staff reaching back, right? But in the Orion uh, one, it shows him with the arrow, with the mallet in the air. Now, if you look over to the right, you see this exact picture, okay? So you look at this picture and you would say, if you didn't know what you were looking at, you'd walk up to the, in the tomb and look at that picture in the bottom right and say, oh, look, that's the Pharaoh about to kill someone, okay? No. That's not what that is, all right? Now, look at that picture and look at the picture on the left, okay? The hunter, this is this picture in the middle here on the bottom right, this is Orion or Osiris in the middle here, okay? This is his formation in the sky, okay? Here, we see Aset or Isis, okay, wearing the Amun-Ra uh, headdress, right? But 
if you look in the sky, she represents Sirius. Okay, so if you see Sirius over here, this is Sirius B over here, you see the red star. She's got the red star over her head. Okay, the red spear over her head, representing her place in the sky. Okay, this don't have nothing to do with no Pharaoh about to kill nobody. Okay, this is where they get the stories mixed up and confused. This is how they can tell you that a uh, Pharaoh was a slave master who captured somebody, found someone in the water, a baby, and raised it up and made him build these structures for his own good. You see what I'm saying? This is where you get the story twisted because you don't know what you're looking at. Okay? They don't, and they're never going to tell you what you're looking at. Okay? But on this channel, this is exactly what we do. We break it all the way down, simple and plain, right and exact, to be understood. Understand, understood through understanding. Okay? That's exactly how we're going to do it every time. So if we're looking at this, this is proving my point. So why am I showing this? Because I'm proving to you that you also had to know the astrology. This is proving that we knew the positioning of stars and planets in the universe, okay? Because you as a novice will look at that picture on the bottom right and say, oh, that's the Pharaoh about to kill someone with a bow and arrow. But someone who knows what they're looking at can sit there and tell you that this is the constellations in the sky. This is a picture of the sky. Okay, why do you think dude on the other side has a bird head? You get what I'm saying? They, they give you the symbol to let you know, hey, no, this is up here. This is above, not below. And they let you know what was on below also. You get what I'm saying? Because you see a lot of reeds and, 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 you know, plants and things. But anyway, I'm just showing you that you had to know the math and you had to know the astronomy to be able to do these structures, okay? And... I don't see in any of these pictures or any of these diagrams where they act, where they saying that someone came down here and gave us this. Okay, this is us in proper natural education. Okay, through natural education, we were able to build these structures. Okay, there was no spooky landings and crafts and they i mean as far as coming on the outside of us helping us like that is what i mean all right these are structures by human beings all right that's just the bottom line okay let's continue all right now let's prove it now let's prove it <laughs> okay who's this this is the visor this is the visor to the pharaoh zoser his name is imhotep all right, which means in peace. All right. And Imhotep was, guess what? A mathematician and an astronomist. Two of the things that I said you need to build any structure like these, you looking at the first man on the planet documented to build one of these monuments. And he was a master in mathematics and astrology. Matter of fact, he was also a master in medicine. So when you see the symbol with the staff and the snakes going up, that's actually his symbol, symbol of Thoth too, but actually he used that symbol in medicine. That's why it's the symbolism for medicine or the red cross, wherever you see that at, you know that come from Imhotep, okay? Now, he was the visor, the high priest in Kemet to the Pharaoh. Okay, and for the Pharaoh, using the supreme mathematics and supreme astrology, he built the very first step pyramid. Okay, let's take a look at it. Okay, you see it down here at the bottom. He built the very first step pyramid. Okay, Imhotep for Zoser. All right. Now, if you see this picture down at the bottom, see this is the other guy that they give the, the Greeks give, give credit to for medicine when it's actually this guy. He studied everything this guy ever did, all right? So that's just that right there. But he was the builder of the first step pyramid, you know, and I'm gonna show you the stages of the pyramids themselves, all right? From step one all the way up to Giza, I'm gonna show you exactly what we went through and how things went in a summary to get the perfect pyramids of what we have today, okay? Check it out. All right, now, the very first things in monuments that they were building were what you would call a mustaba, 
okay? A mastaba was a one floor building that sometimes went down underground, maybe in one or two shafts, but mainly a one floor building, let's say like a ranch style house, okay? A mustaba, that's the very first structures or the beginning of it, okay? And you see these four mustabas, of course, I told you I'm showing the evidence tonight, all right? We're not just talking. Everything you hear, you see right here on the screen, okay? So the mustaba is one level and you see they was already going underground, putting the burials, putting the coffins, whatever they needed up underground, you see? And you see this is also perfectly cut stone, okay? So it ain't no, oh, later on, they was able to do this with the rocks. No, from the beginning, they was doing this with the rocks, okay? And I'm showing you right here, and they started out with the mustaba, okay? Let's continue. All right, now, now we see from the mustaba, we see the very first pyramid, the step pyramid from Imhotep to Pharaoh Zoser, okay? Take a look. Now you see them, it's really just mustabas stacked on top of each other, okay? You see how he did it? He had the idea of, I'm gonna put a box on top of a box, on top of a box, on top of a box, but each box is gonna be smaller as I get higher. Get what I'm saying? That's where you get the step pyramid, okay? more perfectly cut stone. And you can see a little bit in front of it, a little bit of the city. See, cause that's what they don't show you either. It ain't just a pyramid there on anywhere there's a pyramid at. Everywhere around it, there's a whole complex around each pyramid, okay? Which if you go back to Let There Be Light or you go back to the Solar Messenger, you can see how we told you how the pyramids worked and what they used them for, okay? Then all this comes together on why they were constructed like this and what they look like and what were around them. OK, but here's the first step pyramid from Imhotep from the Mastaba. OK. Now, there's nothing about Imhotep being visited by any strange people or any outside forces besides the creator that gave him the ability to build this. We said through education, through proper education, he was able to put this structure together, okay? And it has nothing to do with any type of spookism or any type of fantasy story that they make up and that they tell you. And it also had nothing to do with any type of slavery, okay? This is what the African was doing in his land, okay? Not just here, because we're gonna show you here in a little bit that it was going on a lot all over Eastern Africa, and we're gonna show you other spots where this pyramid's at, you know what I mean? From an earlier time, to show you that this has been going on and this is part of the culture, okay? This was part of our ar architecture and how we put cities together, like how they got now, church, police station, fire department, you know, the basic things you need in the city, that's how it was here too, and you always had your pyramids, okay? Let's continue. Now, you're saying, what's this? These don't look like the ones in uh, Egypt. No, nah, just like I said, there was pyramids before this and in other places also, okay? This is down in Ethiopia, which used to be called Cush, okay? You see Cush in the Bible, you hear about the land of Cush being old and Cushites, you know, and all this and warriors. They also had pyramids too. You see that? Same culture. All the way up and down the Nile River, same culture. Okay. This has nothing to do with no aliens and this ain't got nothing to do with no slavery. Okay. I'm showing you right here the culture of the people and the construction of the people from just the area, okay? What the young boys say now, this is what was going on, okay? This is just what was going on at the, at the time, okay? Supreme mathematics, you know, supreme structures, okay? Let's continue. Now we see Giza, okay? Now we've seen from the other pictures, where it came from, 
They started here, got to here, and we get to here, okay? Now there's a few other ones, of course, a bunch of other ones, a, a bunch more in between all that, but we're just showing you the basic ones so you can see the progression of man in the building of these pyramids and the building of these structures, okay? Okay, now look, if you can even look closer, you see these people, see these people over here on the rocks? See these people standing over here? Look how they look compared to their structure, okay? That's why they can't believe we did it because look at their scale of the people compared to it, okay? So they're gonna have this confusion, but I'm gonna show you here tonight that there should be no more confusion after this. It was built by the human being and for the human being benefit, okay? Let's continue. All right, now, like I was saying, there was a progression in between this. So in this progression, you get this structure that is called the Bit Pyramid of Sneferu. Okay? So the Bit Pyramid of Sneferu, you see, it wasn't as perfect as the one we see in Giza, but we can see how they was coming from the Step Pyramid in Mustaba and getting up to where they're at now. You see them to the Great Pyramid, you see what I'm saying? But this is one that didn't come out exactly perfect. You know what I'm saying? This one didn't come out exactly perfect, all right? This is called the Bent Pyramid of Sneferu, okay? Now, as we see first, he had the Bent Pyramid of Sneferu, okay? Then Sneferu came back and they built the Red Pyramid of Sneferu, which we see came out perfect, okay? So Giza wasn't only the perfect, wasn't the place of the only perfect pyramids, all right? A lot of them we don't see now because it's been trashed and, you know, things that happen to it through war, through warfare, but we can see some of the destruction we can see through the Red Pyramid of Sneferu that they were building perfect pyramids with perfectly cut brick. And these are all attributed to men and their families. Okay. The family, all the whole family buried around here. Okay. Okay. So they not having no one do this for them. That don't, that's not a part of this is what I'm saying. This was a study. I'm going to show you that later on in the pod too. This was a science passed down. You know what I mean? Through men that they call now, it done came into what they call Masons or Masonic, but it's really come from builders. Why do you think Masons are builders? They call themselves the master builders, grand masters. These were levels of construction, okay? This was, not only did you build in the mind, but you could build the actual structure. You could bring it to life. See what I'm saying? Because they knew math and astrology. You get what I'm saying? That's why if you look at the Masons, they're all about math and astrology, okay? It comes from these people. We'll show you that later on in the pod. But this is the perfect red pyramid of Sneferu, all right? Let's continue. Okay, like I was saying, all right? Now, this is Meruka, okay? Meruka was another visor to one of the pharaohs, and he was a pyramid builder, okay? We see the symbolism. You see Snep, you see... um. You see him standing here, and you see the pyramid in front. He's holding the pyramid in front of you to show you, yeah, I had the science. I am one of the builders. With the left foot forward, like they do in Freemasonry, okay? You see, to the, free, to the Masons, this is a whole ritual right here. But you see, thousands and thousands of years ago, Meruka was one of the originators of this science. And he was a master builder, obviously, as we see right here in this picture. A build a creator of pyramids, human man. Okay, you see it's all over the room. All right. Now, as we look into other structures, okay, we also see the construction of the tombs. Okay, now. If these structures were put together by an outside source or an outside force, you wouldn't be seeing the faces of these people inside the buildings, okay? 
they're not going to give the credibility to someone else if they were the ones who actually constructed it, okay? So you see inside tells you who the people were who put this together, okay? You see right inside the tombs who the people were who put this together, all right? You see the pictures. You see the faces. Okay? This was a culture. This was a country of people invaded, lost a war, and we all know when you lose the war, you lose the spoils. So the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the history, they're going to wipe everything away and make it their own story, take in what they want to take from the story. And that's what we get regurgitated to us. And that's what most of us live our lives by, the recycled story from a real story. Okay? But they don't want to admit that there was a war fought over this story, which ended us up where we are today. Okay? This is the pyramid theory, okay? We are the ones, we are the builders, we are the people that put this together. And we have the ability to be together and unify and build. We've been doing it since the beginning of time. This is just a little glimpse into time, what we're going through right now, family. We can put it together, we can unite, and we can build together. That's the whole mission. That's the whole mission. All right? Continue. You see on the inside, you see that? See the faces, you see the people, human beings, okay? Now we all know, we're not even gonna go into the faces. We know all this is symbolism. Heru, we know all this is symbolism, okay? All right, now, they always wanna tap in and talk about, you know, aliens and Sumeria and the Anunnaki, the landings and, you know, this is where they get they all alien story from. The Anunnaki and, you know, they landed in Arabia and because you can obviously see these are Arabic men, okay? When you see in the Kemet, you see the dreadlocks, you see the Afro. Here we see the curly beards, the curly hair. This is a uh, Arabic story, so to speak, from the Middle East, all right? This isn't an African story. All right, they want to make it an African story and say, oh, well, they got it from this story and they put it with this. But I just showed you that our knowledge came from the South, from the South. It didn't come from the North. OK, it was spread to the North. All right. So they were obviously the latter of the uh, the gainers of this type of wisdom. OK, but as we see, they got the wing people, you know that landed and you want to look at this and you want to say, oh, this must mean someone came here and they did all this, okay? When you're looking at this picture on the left, you see my man with the pine cone in his hand, all right? That's the same symbolism as in Kemet, like if they had the unk, okay? Because they said the pineal gland looks like a pine cone, all right? So even this isn't a physical picture like you think it's a physical picture, all right? This actually has symbolism to what's going on inside the body and the forces, okay? Even these pictures don't actually depict, depict, depict real happenings, all right, family? It's all scientific. It's all science, okay? And it all breaks down to mathematics and astrology. It's going to every time, all right? So we see where they want to come in with the alien story because they ain't really knowing what they even read. Okay? So when they see in the wings or when they see in the dog heads or they see in the bird heads, they thinking it's some, about some alien or something. All right? When they have no idea, you see? You see, this is all astrological. Okay? Because you see it over here with Osiris sitting on the throne, okay? with the people in front of him, okay? All astrological family, all right? Nothing about no aliens, nothing spooky, all right? So what's that telling us out of this family? What do we get from this? What do we get from knowing this, okay? What we get from this is knowing that it is the, it's your birthright as a human being to have the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of you 
and the universe around you, okay? That's one of your duties. One thing they told Adam in the Bible was, was to go out and name everything. That's science, okay? That's science, all right? It's part of our birthright to know where we are. That's half the reason people don't know what's going on out here. They don't even know what type, what they're even living on, okay? They can't go outside and tell you what kind of trees it is unless it's a fruit on it. Uh, oh, that's an apple tree because I saw the apple, not because you can look at the tree and tell me what it is, you know? You can't identify with anything on this planet that you live on. That's why you feel like this ain't for you because you know nothing about it. That's all it is. This is your planet. Don't just hand it over to someone because you don't know anything about it. Don't understand it. All right. It's for you to understand and for you to use for your benefit. And we've been doing it for thousands and thousands of years is what I was just proving to you. And we have the ability to reactivate that once we reconnect to nature and the universe around us. How do I mean connect? What do I mean by connect? Connect mentally and also know that you are it and it is you okay what do i mean by that everything that's on the outside is on the inside is what i mean everything that it took to create everything out here is inside you in some chemical form or astronomical form okay there is no difference between anything on the outside and the inside okay and when you see that you will be able to build that's how you become that master builder once you reconnect with yourself being one with everything, knowing that there's nothing that exists that ain't inside of you. So therefore it can be used for your benefit because it is you. It's in relation to you, all right? This the family of everything because like we said in Adams to Adams, it all comes together as one is what we see, all right? So it's all about the reconnection, all right? Connecting back to ourselves, taking ourselves back, being happy with who we are and living in now, all right? We see what we did then, now what do we do now, okay? It ain't about tomorrow, it's about right now. When you get to looking back and all that happened the other day, you know what, what can I do now? What's going on now that I can do to, on some level, elevate? Okay, is in you, is in all of us, and it's been here since the beginning of time, and it's yours for your benefit. Okay, family? Unplug from all these things that they try to force you to be, and all these stereotypes and labels that they try to put on you to make you into. Okay? Tap into the true reality, tap into the true self, and become awakened, family. That's straight from Nye God TV. Okay? You see where we come from, all right? These were the people of this land, all right? This is a human being experience, okay? These same people you see are the same people that built these structures that we see, okay? They knew the land, they used the land, they were connected with the land, all right? This is our planet, okay? It even said in your Bible that it was the overlords of the earth, okay? This don't belong to the names that you say, these demonic names and these other entities that you try to put the label on and claim that the world belongs to. The world belongs to the human, was created for the human to have this experience. What do you take from this experience? Do you ride through this experience, oblivious to what's going on and just ride it to the end and see what happens? Or do you actually know that you're on a ride, take the reins, take control and guide it towards a direction that I add on for the people behind you, okay? I wanna thank everybody for tapping in tonight. You know, just the pyramid theory. I hope it was simple and plain and understood through understanding for everyone, you know? And like I said, we're not going against anyone or trying to degrade anyone's thinking or ways of how they, how they go through what they go through or how they explain what they explain. But this is the undeniable facts and the undeniable truth of this story and the structure, the construction of the pyramids and anything outside that and the other, and we just proved tonight that all the stories that they could give you other than that are just fantasy. Okay. And this is the human being. This is, you are the human being. This is the human experience. 
and this is Born Real Universal Transmitter Supreme Science on Earth in the Universe, and this is iGod TV. Peace. <laughs>